England have still got it all to play for in the Six Nations. They've got to go away to Italy. Not helped by the fact that they didn't get a run out last week against the Barbars with uh, that game being called off due to COVID breaches from some of the Barbars players, which I see has now uh, stepped it up a notch. But yeah, I will go through the, uh, the lineups for this one and the predictions recent history between the teams and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how things are going to go uh to the italian guys someone left me a comment on a guide to italian pronunciation i haven't had a chance to properly review that yet so i will in all likelihood butcher the italian names for another week but i assure you i do endeavor to try and get them as correct as possible uh, just give me a bit of time the day job has been unfortunately pretty busy but uh yeah kick off for this one it's uh, 5.45 local time, so 4.45 uh, GMT, which makes it 5.45 in the morning over here in New Zealand, which is just just late enough, I guess you could say, uh, to get up for any earlier, and you'd probably want to watch it on demand, but just before 6 in the morning, make a cup of coffee, get some crumpets, and uh, sit down to watch England take on Italy. Now, the recent record between Italy and... And England is not a pretty one if you're an Italian fan, but they've never beaten England. So you can look at the last five, you can look at the last 10, whatever it is, it's going to be the same. <laughs> well, I should probably change this around, shouldn't I? Bear with me a second. All right, that looks a bit better. The five goes on this side. England beating, uh, beating Italy. So yeah, last five is five zip. Average score over those last five games is 43 points to 11. Now, remember, that's that's kind of important because uh, England are still competing with, um, with Ireland and with France in terms of trying to get their hands on the Six Nations title. England's current points difference is 15 points to the good whereas uh france is 13 and ireland is 30 yeah, that's when why ireland went so gangbusters at the end of that game to try and score as many points as they could against italy they didn't want to finish off the game they ended up conceding a try uh right at the death if you remember so that points difference could become a factor so the fact that there's like a 30 odd point average points difference in england's favor could be uh, could be pretty important. I mean, if Ireland win with a bonus point, it's all it's all for naught anyway. But over in France, they've not really got a history of doing that, so in all likelihood, it could come down to two points differences. But anyway, we will see. In terms of the lineups, the Italian team is pretty similar to the one that lost over in Ireland last week. I believe it's the same front row with Fichetti, Bigi, and Zilocchi. Uh, Lazzaroni and Canoni are the locks. Negri, Stain, and Poledri are your back rowers. So pretty much the same four pack that played last week. Uh, Violi and Garbisi are 9 and 10. Remember Garbisi? I mean, I'm hardly a guy to be telling anyone about him because I think I've literally seen him play 80 minutes of rugby. But he seems like a um, a pretty good attacking young, young 10. And he took his moment in that game against Ireland last week where he backed himself saw a couple of Fords in front of him and decided to to put on some hot feet and sold a dummy went over for a try so you got to think he's going to be brewing with a fair bit more confidence having having that result so yeah he's a, a young guy at 10 we'll see how his career goes uh, Carlo Canna continues on at 12 and Maurice is at 13 I've still never been 100% sold on Kana at 12, but his defense, as I mentioned previously, is better than I give him credit for. Uh, Bellini and Parvani are the wingers. The only change to, I think, the starting 15 in total is Minozzi is there at 15 after playing in that losing performance for Wasps at the previous weekend. He is now free to play for his national team, so he gets an immediate call-up. The bench is still the same. They've still gone with the 6-2 split. So they've got Mbanda um, uh, there in the 21 jersey rather than having 
uh, like a three back bench, so 6 2. And Palazzani gets the call as the reserve scrum half because Braley has been dropped for this one. So that's the Italian team. For England, it's kind of harder to talk about the switches from last week because there is no game last week. Uh, they've gone with Furbank at fullback. And he seems to be, when I looked at the England squad, he's the one guy that people were less than thrilled about his inclusion in the England squad. I didn't see enough in Northampton since the lockdown ended, but people were saying his form was not the best. But Eddie Jones is keeping the faith with him. So Watson is on one wing. Uh, Johnny May is on the other. So two pretty attacking fleet-footed wingers rather than having the old big man little man uh jonathan joseph and henry slade are the midfield i'm so happy to see jonathan joseph get a run because i think he's perenni perennially underrated i really rate him as a player he's uh he's proper dangerous he's stronger than he looks he's quicker than he looks i don't know good distributor uh ben young's is nine Farrell moves into 10 because remember uh there's no george ford so um yeah Farrell gets the job at 10 which is from when I see him play for Saracens, pretty much where he usually plays anyway. Uh, Vunipola, George, and Sinclair are the front row. So kind of no real surprises there. Uh, Itoje partners Johnny Hill in the locks. So Johnny Hill will be on his debut. Um, yeah, he's been on a pretty good run with his club team. So uh, maybe it's fitting that he gets a, a cap for England. Tom Curry and Sam Underhill will cause all kinds of problems at the breakdown. That's just what they do. So the Italians will have to be very quick to the ruck or they're going to expect their ball to get pilfered all day long. And uh, Billy V is still there at number eight. You got Tom Dunn on the bench. He'll make his debut. Uh, likewise, Ollie Thorley and Ollie Lawrence. So you got four potential debutants in this England lineup, which is more than you would think most coaches throw into one game. Against Italy, maybe it's the right time to do it. Uh, we will see Ellis Genge, Charlie Yules, Ben Earl, uh, Dan Robson, and so on for for England. So overall, man, it's a pretty strong looking team. I know Exeter Chiefs fans are still pretty sour about some of their guys not getting picked. Uh, Eddie Jones has his reasons, man. He likes playing guys sometimes at a different position from where they play at their club. They play in a different position for England. He seems to like a really big number eight in Billy V. I haven't checked the height weight difference between him and Sam Simmons, but uh we'll see if it pays off they they're going to want to get a bonus point they're going to want to get as big a points difference as possible so expect england to be kind of trying to put the hammer down especially in that second half but like i mentioned average score 43 11 over those last five games uh the bookies over here in new zealand have got england by 32 so pretty comfortable and rugby forecast algorithm goes a little bit more conservative saying england by 20 but yeah you guys let me know your thoughts on the selections for this one anybody in particular that you are looking forward to seeing remember england got four guys on debut i should have mentioned Jaden hayward is the guy who drops out of the italian side for minozzi seems like a pretty a pretty fair swap to be fair if you had the choice between the two you would probably go with minozzi he is very dangerous uh, at fullback although he was kept pretty quiet in that game uh, between wasps and exeter at the previous weekend but yeah you guys let me know your thoughts on this one how do you think it's going to go this one's on itv which is a pretty straightforward one to get to i should have mentioned um rugby pass for those of you guys like in many parts of asia they've lost the rights to the six nations so if you've got a vpn rather than getting premier sports which is like 60 bucks a month i would suggest just watching this one on itv but uh anyway Sure, how to do that in a tick. But um, yeah, you guys have any thoughts, and I'll talk to you soon. See you later. All right, guys. So if you want to see the games this weekend, that's being the Six Nations, uh, two of them are on the BBC, and one of them is on ITV. The good thing about those services is they are free services, which here in New Zealand is just unheard of. Uh, if you are outside the UK, though, you won't be able to use the service unless you sign up to a VPN. The one I'm using here is ExpressVPN. You can see I'm connected to a server in the UK. And I've signed up for both an ITV account and for a, um, 
a BBC iPlayer account. So it basically means name, email address, and I think you have to Google a UK postcode with the sign up process. But apart from that, essentially you can just sign in and uh, watch the content. So you can see there's, um, you know, on the BBC, they've got some Scrum 5 content, change the video quality and they've got six nations wales scotland listed and they've got uh, france ireland listed so yep that one is there and then the other one which is uh the middle game england against italy that one is on um that one's on atv so it's good you can watch the games live you can watch them on demand if you're outside the UK, you do need to use a VPN. So I'll put a link in the description for Express. If you've already got a VPN, that should be okay. You can just use whichever one. But essentially, connect to a server in the UK. If you don't have an account with either the BBC or with ITV, you will need to sign up. But other than that, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, enjoy the game, guys. See ya.